Surprisingly, most of the decisions that we make clinically about whether a patient has responded adequately to a therapy uh, occur within a very small dynamic range of the disease burden that a patient can have. Um, and these are all old definitions that are based on uh, the ability of a pathologist to see residual disease by light microscopy. And so that has a sensitivity only down to a few percent uh, residual uh, malignant cells. And so um, for many years, uh, the field has been looking at ways to look at deeper levels of disease response than the typical complete remission. And there are a number of technologies available for different diseases to quantify the amount of residual disease that's present after initial or subsequent therapy. Um, these include things like flow cytometry or specific quantitative PCR called allele-specific oligonucleotide PCR, and then more recently, next-generation sequencing that uses uh, consensus primers so that there's no need to customize the assay for each individual patient like needs to be done for ASOPCR. So using any of these technologies, it's been shown in several lymphoid malignancies that the achievement of a deep disease response, meaning less than 10 to the minus 4 or 0.01% disease, is a prognostic for both disease-free survival and in many cases overall survival. Um, there are some problems with wide implementation of flow cytometry because there's a lot of variability between labs and lack of standardization. Um, so the molecular techniques potentially have the ability to standardize. Unfortunately, the quantitative PCR method that I mentioned called ASO-PCR does require patient-specific primers, which in the United States pre presents a barrier to moving it forward as a companion diagnostic. Now, we're in contrast here in the U.S. to the European Union, where there's actually very extensive use of ASO-PCR through the EuroMRD consortium. However, that's just not really going to work here in the United States. So the next generation sequencing approach for um, uh, genetic MRD quantification uh, has the benefit of using standardized primers and a standardized platform for all patients. And so there's no customization, and this is a platform that can potentially move forward as a companion diagnostic um, uh, as an indication for, ther for additional therapy if a patient fails to uh, have an adequate disease response. So this technology actually does not sequence the entire genome. This uses primers that bind to uh, regions of the uh, immunoreceptors that are rearranged during the natural process of development in B and T lymphoid cells. And so using consensus primers for specific loci, such as the immunoglobulin heavy chain or the immunoglobulin light chain, or the various T cell receptors such as beta, delta, and gamma, you can amplify the entire repertoire of that specific gene rearrangement within a sample. And that sample could be peripheral blood, it could be bone marrow, it could be a piece of lymphoma tissue. And by doing that, at diagnosis, you can identify the dominant clone, or clonotype as we call it, and that represents the patient's malignancy. It's basically a naturally occurring barcode within the cancer cells that arose because of the natural process of immunoreceptor gene rearrangement. And once you know that specific barcode for a patient from using the next-gen approach at diagnosis, you can then take subsequent samples after treatment and quantify that specific clonotype sequence down to a very deep level and quantify residual disease down to one in a million leukocytes, so 10 to the minus six sensitivity, which is two logs more sensitive than flow cytometry and a log more sensitive than typical ASOPCR. It's very targeted, um, high throughput parallel amplification of a specific locus. So you're not doing genome-wide amplification, although I think there, in the future there may be applications where you could do whole genome sequencing, still capture the immunoreceptors, um, and have a way to quantify those. But currently, this platform just amplifies specific immunoreceptors. In lymphoid malignancies, we have the advantage that these B and T lymphoid cells undergo a natural process of immunoreceptor rearrangement. And so essentially, these diseases come to us already barcoded.
Um, there's no other disease that's typically going to have this um, the, other than this class of lymphoid malignancies. And so we can take advantage of this as a biomarker of the patient's disease to quantify it with a very high sensitivity and very uh, high specificity. Well, I think the generalization is that within specific disease types, we can make more or less summary statements about the meaning of specific disease burdens after induction therapy and then at subsequent time points through the course of therapy. And where I think the field needs to go is to start intervening on low levels of MRD progression as opposed to wait for patients to be significantly debulked and then relapse, be filled up with leukemia cells again, be having symptoms from that, Typically, they don't have other blood uh, counts, um, so they're really in clinical distress. And if we can move to a point where we use a platform like the NextGen platform for MRD quantification in serial fashion, we'll actually be able to capture the recurrence of disease at a very low level and potentially intervene at that time point. And I think that there are many therapies, including immunotherapies, that have a higher likelihood of working when there is a small amount of progressive disease as opposed to uh, full clinical relapse.